guys, Adam here, your wiring guy. Today we're gonna learn how to change out a single pole switch. Maybe you've got a broken switch, maybe you just wanna upgrade to a, a nice decorator style switch. Uh, we're gonna learn how to do that, but before we do that, what's the very first thing we need to do before working with electricity? That's right, turn the breaker off. So we're gonna start there. All right, before we work on any energized circuit, the best thing to do is to shut off the breaker at the main panel. Now, my panel is not labeled very well, so I could just shut off every single circuit breaker in the whole thing, and that way I know I'm covered. But this one is my main. It's a 125 amp main breaker. So if I shut this one off, it's gonna shut off everything in the house. If you're unsure, the best thing to do is just to shut off every single breaker. Now, I know that this happens to be my main breaker, so if I shut it off, all my power goes off. Probably a good thing to have a flashlight if you're gonna go that route. Okay, so now that we have the power shut off to this thing, we can tell the light doesn't work, but we're still going to want to check those wires and make sure there's no live wires. It's possible that there's another circuit traveling through this box. We just want to make sure the power's off, so we're going to check that. Um, but now that we've got the breaker shut off upstairs, why don't you come in for a closer look and let's take a look at this. Okay, great. So, light switch doesn't work, so presumably we do have the breaker shut off or the main breaker shut off, whichever you decided to do. So first step is to obviously just remove the cover plate and expose the switch so we can get to the heart of the matter and see what's going on in here. Okay, now that we've got the switch out, it's good practice just to check with a uh, this is just a little inductance meter. It senses voltage around the wiring. Let's go ahead and turn this on and just make sure we've got it. This one has a little flashlight on it, which is very helpful. Okay, taking a look inside that box. Doesn't look like any of these other wires are live. So yeah, we're in good shape. Now, let me point something out to you guys. Looks like whoever wired this switch, they used the stab backs on the switch itself. These are those little holes on the back, rather than using the terminals. I prefer to use the terminals, it makes a little bit better connection, a little bit more secure. These things have been known to break and will oftentimes, with just a little bit of effort, just pop right out like that. So um, that's why it's just better practice to use the side terminal. So when we put our new switch in, let me grab that. We're gonna put in a, de a Decora switch and we're gonna use the side terminals on this switch. Um, just a little bit better connection. This one also has the stab backs on it, but we're gonna use the side terminals because I think that's a better connection. So let me finish removing this switch and we'll get on that. All right, so we have our new Decora switch here. Decora just stands uh, for decorator, short for decorator. And you'll notice on the on most of the toggle switches, like the one we just took out, up is, is on and down is off, and it says so on the switch. Well, this one you may be wondering, well, how do I know which side is up, which side is on, and which side is off? Well, typically, I don't know if you'll be able to see that in this light and on the lens, but uh, this says top on it, so they're usually imprinted on the switch itself. So as long as you can read it, you've got it up is on and down is off on a single pole switch. Three-way switch is a different animal. We'll cover that in another video. But also, on most switches, ground is almost always up. Now that does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but the brands that we buy here in the States, most of the brands that you buy at the home centers and all that, you're gonna notice the ground is up on most switches. I don't know exactly why that is. If somebody does, let me know in the comments. So, the green screw is always your ground. That's true on switches, outlets, and so forth. So go ahead and get that landed and make sure you get a nice tight connection on it. Now, <clears throat> these terminals here, um, these are kind of cool. Now the switch you have may or may not have this, but this has a little plate on it. So we could put the wire directly underneath there, keep it straight, put it underneath there and tighten our screw and then we're good to go. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently because your switch may not have that plate on it. So I wanna show you a little trick. A uh, pair of wire strippers, they usually have these little holes in it. You might wonder what that's all about. Well, that's so you can make a little horseshoe in the wiring to go around a screw. So just bend a little horseshoe shape on each one of these to wrap around the screw. And the thing I want to point out is 
One of these wires is hot coming in. One of these wires is our switch leg going to our light. All the switch is doing is it's making and breaking the contact. So there is no polarization on this switch. There is no in and out. It does not matter which one's hot and which one's our switch leg. Because again, the only thing the switch is doing is it's joining these two contacts and separating them. Turning our light on, turning our light off, turning the light on and off. That's it. So the reason we do the horseshoe, and we always want to go around the screw clockwise, and you're going to see why here in just a second. Because what happens when you go clockwise around the screw and tighten it, it has a tendency to wrap that wire tighter around the screw. You can imagine if I went the other way, it's going to push the wire off the screw, and we don't want to do that. Master electrician here having a hard time putting a screw on a switch, but anyway, because you can see how that's wrapped it even tighter around, making a good contact. If we put the wire around this way, you can tell when you tighten the screw, it's just going to undo our connection and try to push the wire off. So that's why whenever you're making these connections, always go around clockwise like that, and then when you tighten it down. Boom, see how that made a nice tight connection? I'm gonna redo this one because I'm not thrilled with it and uh, I'm even gonna leave this in the video to make you uh, understand that even guys who have been doing this for a couple of decades have issues sometimes. One thing you can do, is if you're having a hard time, is just take your wire strippers and crimp it down just like that. You see how I crimped that? Just kinda of gave myself a bit of an assist since I was struggling a little bit. All right, so that's all there is to it. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you, this is super important, and a lot of times people make this mistake, even, even guys who have been doing this for a while I've seen do this. These are your ground wires, and so you want to make sure those are tucked deep into the box because what happens is when you fold, and you might have a bunch of wires, but when you fold your wires into the box, you want to make sure that your ground wire doesn't touch these terminals because what I've seen happen is guys get sloppy or just not pay attention they go to push their wire in the box that ground wire hits one of these terminals that's a dead short and believe me it'll get your attention when you have a dead short you don't want to do that so just make sure everything's nice and neat folded into the box make sure you can read the word top or that the ground is up that way you know up will be on down will be off that's pretty important and then put it back together All right, and I just so happen to have a cover plate right here that fits, so we'll go ahead and get that cover plate thrown on there. Another thing I will tell you, if you want your friends and guests at your home to think you really know what you're doing, most electricians take a lot of pride in their work, and most good electricians, when they put the cover plate screws on, they're going to have their screw line, their screws go directly up and down just like that just uh, it's just a, a little preference thing it's certainly not important but it certainly looks a lot better than that you know what I mean it's just one of those type A personality things I like to have my uh, my lines nice and neat and straight so anyway your house do what you want to do that's how I do mine so now we're gonna go turn power back on test the switch out and make sure everything works all right, so now for the moment of truth. We got our circuit breaker turned back on, we got our switch in, and look at that, just like we knew what we were doing. All right, so that's how you change out a single pole switch. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you liked this video, please give us a like or add a comment if you have any questions. If there's anything in particular you'd like to learn how to do, please let us know in the comments below, and uh, we'll look into getting that video made too. All right, thanks for everything, and have a good one, and be safe out there. Thanks.